Hey everyone, so today I am going to be showing you some of my favorite polymer clay tools. All of these tools I highly recommend for beginners and if I were to do everything over again I would only purchase these tools and I really hope this video helps you beginners who want to start polymer clay or you have started and you don't know what tools to use. So let's get right into it. The first tool I have here is an acrylic roller. It looks just like this. I got mine at Michael's. It's very convenient for rolling out your clay and you can use it to make layered cakes and different things. I would have rather gotten this instead of a pasta machine like I did the first time. I just got this and it's the best thing I think I've ever bought. <laughs> then I have some ball tools. So there are these two here. I like these a lot because of the balls at the end, which are really nice. And then they also have some shaping tools down at the bottom. Mine are really dirty. A lot of these are dirty just because I just use them. So please excuse that. This also comes with a third one, and I got these at Michael's, but I couldn't show you the third one because it's really big and you can see my face through the reflection thing. Then I have this tool I just purchased last week, and I'm really loving it right now. It's the Martha Stewart Collection Embossing or Embellishing Tool. I think that's what it's called. It's found in the jewelry section at Michael's. This was about $7, but I had a coupon, so I got it. And you can use this for blending and... I just think it is wonderful. I have some blades. This one here is really dirty. I can't find my other one, but that's okay. And then this one here is got like ripples on it, and this is perfect for cutting out pieces of your clay miniature food so you can make it look like it was bitten. I have these two blades here. This X-Acto knife here is extremely dirty just because I've had it for three years probably. I just changed the blade and I have this blade here and this one's also really dirty. I have a bunch more of these. I can exchange it out for though. And I purchased these at Home Depot. I think this was about five, four dollars, somewhere around there. And this comes with a pack of 10 for I think five dollars. So that's really nice. I have some more dotting tools and these ones are a lot smaller. And I got these at Michael's for four dollars. There's a third one, but it's not very good, the size. I don't like it at all. It's bigger than these two like combined and I don't really use it. And these get really dirty really easily. You can see I kind of tried scraping some of it off, but it just always stays on the clay. So I don't know how people keep theirs clean. Um, I'd rather just keep them dirty. It doesn't affect any of my clay, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I have these three guys here. And I could not live without these when sculpting. This one here is Sculpey Clay Softener. I use this for my really hard clay. I just put some in and mix it up. And the clay becomes really soft. And I usually let that sit out for a day. And then I can use it again when it's not super soft. And this was $5 or $4 at Michael's. And then I have this Fimo Deco Gel. My bottle is really gross, kind of, but... That is okay. This was really expensive. It was about $10 on Amazon. I will put a link to all the stuff I get online down in the description bar if you want to check it out. But this is liquid clay and it comes out very translucent, which is great for making miniature foods and things. Then I have Sculpey Translucent Liquid Sculpey, I guess. So this is pretty much the same thing as the Fimo Deco Gel, but it is not as translucent. And if you are going to get some of this, I would just choose one over the other. You really don't need both. I just had both because I really wanted to try this out. And yep. I have one needle tool. It's this one here. It is this little tool here. And this I got at AC Moore for $2.00. And it came in a pack of two. These are actually wool felting um, needles, but I use it for clay. I just think it's better because it comes with this little cap thing. Then come the molds. This mold here is dirty. I stained it. Um, it's from Miniature Suite on Etsy. Again, links will be included in the description bar. I don't really use molds too often, but I do use them for my cupcake bases. 
just because it's really convenient and I make a lot of cupcakes and making cupcake bases takes forever. I used to do it all the time, I know. But I like these, especially if you're making more detailed cupcakes. I don't think the same base every time really matters using this pattern. So. Then I just have some sandpaper. This one I used to make my sugar cookies. That's why there are some pastel colors on there. Just because when I make cookies, I usually put some pastel on here first, then make the cookies so the cookie already has some coloring on the back. Then I have a toothbrush. And this is great for adding some texture onto your cookies or cupcakes. I got this from my dentist. You can just ask them for a toothbrush. I'm pretty sure almost all dentists have toothbrushes you can get. Then I have this skewer thing. I'm not really sure what this is used for. I got this at the grocery store in a huge pack, but it's got this really cool loopy thing at the end. It almost looks like a giant eye pin. And I use this all the time just to shape some of my clay animals. I have this cookie cutter here. This came in a huge set of, I think, 16 at Michael's for $8, but I used a coupon and I really only use this shape now. I use it mainly for cupcakes and cookies and things and flowers. So if you want to get this, maybe you could buy the cutter pack and split up with your friends and just get this one. I have an icing tip. This thing is my baby. This one is kind of bent up. I have two, but the other one has clay in it right now. And this one is 99 cents at Michael's and I use this for my fake icing. Tin foil for adding texture and you can steal some of this from your kitchen. Last but not least, I have these cutters here and I just got these this summer and I think I'm in love with these. I don't know why I didn't get them sooner. These are really small Kemper cutters, so what you do is you go and punch your shape out of your clay and then you can use this little thing and it pops it right out for you. And I like these a lot because they're so small and they're perfect for miniature foods. And all of these I believe were around $10. I got these off Etsy, I'll put the link down below so you guys can check them out. Here were all of the tools I used to make polymer clay. I occasionally use some other obscure tools that I only use once in a blue moon pretty much, but I really don't recommend those for beginners. I purchased these products over a really long period of time, so if you want to get these, I recommend just progressively or gradually getting them. Don't go blow a whole bunch of money and get everything at once, it's really, you don't need it all at once. So if you have any questions about how to use these tools, the reason I didn't show you how to use these in this video is because I have loads of tutorials. In, in all my tutorials, I'm pretty sure I use every single one of these products, almost at least. So if you ask down in the comments, oh, I want to know how to use this, I can send you a link to one of my videos where I use that tool and the time I use it. Also, if you would like to request other videos, please let me know. I'm thinking about doing a products I regret buying for like the whole crafting realm in general because I have a lot of things I don't use. So if you want to see that video, let me know. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And if you don't, I'm really sorry. So I will see you guys soon. Bye!